The Bridgeport Indians, 27 straight wins. Back to defend their state championship. Standing in their way, the upstart, Polka Dots. They shot the state, returning three interceptions for touchdowns in the semifinals. Can the Dots slow down the powerful stick-eye offense of Bridgeport? The Indians on the verge of state history. The Indians and Dots for the double-A title now on WTRF 7 Sports. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Wheeling Island Stadium. Game number one of three of the Super 6 championships on an absolutely perfect night for high school football. I'm David Bloomquist. Joining me is Tom Bear Bechtel. And, Tom, tonight we have contrasting offenses. Uh, Bridgeport brings in, obviously, the power, the stick guy. They run the football. Polka, a little more wide open. Yeah, Polka, you're allowed to see any play in their repertoire. Our Coach Lemley has a history of outstanding play calling, and it's definitely a contrast in styles here tonight, David. Bridgeport, of course, won the state championship last year. As a matter of fact, they've won more playoff games than any school in West Virginia history. Uh, Rohrbaugh, he's really the guy on this offense for the uh, Indians. Yeah, he makes the team go. Uh, CR is just a great football player. Had a huge run last year mm -hmm. in that uh, championship game win over Wayne. So he'll be toting the mail tonight for the Indians. Poke counters with Alan Berry, quarterback, defensive back. Returned two uh, interceptions for touchdowns last week against Magnolia. Uh, Poke is going to throw the football. Yeah, they're going to have to throw the football to establish a running game. They have a fine running back in Daryl Thomas. He had an outstanding play in the playoffs, and he's been strong all season long. Okay, kickoff is coming up. We'll see if the power game can take the passing game or vice versa. Double-A state championship right after this. Welcome back, everybody. We're about set for kickoff, double-A state championship from Wheeling Island Stadium. Of course, Bear, we've had about a week's worth of rain, and the, the field's had a lot of tending to by Mr. Wilkie, who is retiring after this year, about eight years of working on the field. But our Mike Anthony is standing by on the field to tell us a little bit more about how this turf is holding up. Mike? Yeah, you mentioned uh, Wilkie, Dave. Jim Wilkinson retiring after 12 years of dedicated service to Ohio County Schools, taking care of this field. It's in great shape. I was talking to both the head coaches, and they both agree that this field is in great shape for a championship football game. Uh, we had some rain all week, but you can barely tell. The field is in great shape, plenty of grass on it, and it's well decorated by Wilkie and the crew here at Wheeling Island Stadium. So shouldn't be a factor tonight, especially how much Bridgeport runs the football. For now on the sidelines, I'm Mike Anthony. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mike. We'll be checking in with him periodically during the game. Bear, you know, both these teams coming into this game have a long and storied playoff tradition. We alluded to it earlier. The Indians of Bridgeport have won more playoff games than any team in West Virginia playoff history. Polka also 19-9 in the postseason, including a 2-2 two two record in state finals games. Yeah, the uh, Polka Dots, uh, you know, they come in with a proud tradition. I believe they've been state champions on three occasions, 1950, 77, and back in 94 here at this Perry Allen turf, but uh, the Bridgeport Indians are seeking their seventh state title tonight, of course. They were the champs just last year over Wayne in that great football game. Another thing that Bridgeport's trying to do, they're trying to become the first team in West Virginia state history to go 28-0 over two seasons and win state championships. Yeah, uh, they have not been beaten since losing to Tyler Consolidated 21-9 in 1999. Yeah, it's just an incredible run. It's, of course, the longest winning streak in their school history, and uh, they haven't had a losing season since back in the 1960s. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Polka comes in with a record of 10 and 3. They started off with a win over Sissonsville. They were beaten by Ravenswood. Then they lost to Wayne. So back-to-back -back losses, they rebounded nicely, beating Oak Hill, Buffalo, Herbert Hoover, lost to Magnolia. Then they beat Winfield. Hurricane, Bluefield, and then in the playoffs, they beat Polsha, Clay County, Magnolia, and then tonight, Bridgeport. In that incredible run there, early in the season, they played six consecutive playoff teams, Dave. So uh, they're certainly well-tested. They came out of it with just a 3-3 uh, three and three record, but nonetheless, they're well-tested. They're ready to go for this championship game. Defending state champion Bridgeport, 13-0. They opened the season with a two-point win over Tyler Consolidated. They then beat the Cannon, Lewis County, Liberty Harrison, East Fairmont, Robert C. Bird, Lincoln, Grafton, Philip Barber, South Harrison. And in the playoffs, they beat Grafton, Wyoming East, and Williamston 
by scores of 50 to 7, 38 to 6, and 41 to 20. You can see they're tossing to see who's going to receive. Of course, Dave, we see there the referee for tonight's game is David Clutter. He's from Wheeling. He'll be accompanied by Sam Jones, Steve Snyder, Ken Merriman. Bridgeport will get the football first. And we're going to get to see an offense that has churned up nearly 400 yards rushing per game in those three wins in the postseason. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Bridgeport Indian football, don't look for the pass. They've only, com they've only <laughs> attempted eight passes in the playoffs. Uh, throughout the season, they've only attempted 39 over a 13-game schedule. So they don't put it in the air. It's good old-fashioned Woody Hayes, stick guy type football, but uh, they certainly are very, it's a very simple but effective offense, Dave. Poker will throw the football. Alan Berry has over 1,000 yards passing, but they're a football team, too, that kind of likes to get it done on the ground. Well, they'd like to get it done on the ground, but, you know, last week they had a real tough time. Daryl Thomas is their outstanding running back. He's been over 100 yards on eight occasions. Uh, he didn't get started until the third game of the season due to a uh, little uh, problem in the, in the preseason, but the, the young man has been very effective. Last week, he was held in check by a strong Magnolia defense, so I would expect tonight here, Dave, they're going to have to establish a passing game to set up the run. A little different style there. Bob Lemley's polka dots getting set to kick it off. Of course, Bob Bennett polka for 32 years. He was a middle school coach for many, many years. He's been the head coach of the dots for the last 12 seasons. Uh, one more referee. I missed my good buddy there, Mark Kerwood, the, uh, mag do that? the magistrate from Marshall County, and uh, I can't forget the judge there. Good look at the officials, for the officials for tonight's game. Andrew Shamblin will do the kicking off for the Dots. 5'11", 198-pound senior. He's number two. Back deep for Bridgeport, number 24, Brandon Wanky, 6'1", 155-pound senior. Of course, the Dots are here due to a uh, big victory last week over Magnolia. They avenged a regular season loss to the Blue Eagles and uh, certainly some fireworks on the defensive end. Uh, four inter five interceptions, three of them returned for touchdowns, but I don't think they're going to get the opportunity tonight to uh, intercept the ball like that, Dave. Another Indian back deep is C.R. Rohrbaugh, and we're going to be calling his name a lot, Bear. Over 1,700 yards rushing from the fullback position and 28 touchdowns on the season. CR had a big play last year. That 43-yard touchdown run uh, late in that contest was the uh, winning score. Game number one of three Super 6 championships from Wheeling Island Stadium is set to get going. Bridgeport trying to win it again, and Polka trying to pull the upset. War Ball is going to take it at the 15. 25, 40, Roar ball with a great return out into Polka territory right off the get-go. Well, this man here that played the up-back position last year, he's the bread and butter of this uh, Bridgeport offense. You're going to see him with the football in his hands all night long. He's an amazing kid, Dave. We'll talk about him as the game goes on, but he also ran cross-country this fall in addition to his football duties, so he's certainly a very versatile athlete. Saw the backs and the receivers. There's the offensive line. Floyd Stout. Lawson, Hartzell, Kerr, they're a big bunch. It's a quarterback keeper right off the get-go, Lindsey. Down near the 40-yard line, drug out of bounds that time by Matt Santmeyer. And there's some laundry on the field already, first play of the game. We get a good look there at Chris Lindsey. He's actually a lineman, in a sense, parading as a quarterback. He's only thrown 39 passes this year, but uh, he's done an... He's done an outstanding job running that offense. Penalty is against Bridgeport for clipping, so they're going to back up. Sotelo and White up front on that defense for the Polka Dots. Gibson, Wiseman, and Looper. Take a look at the linebackers and DBs. Thomas, Shamblin, Burdett, Allen Berry had four interceptions, a record in last week's win over Magnolia, Santmeyer, and Corrego. I think Coach uh, Lemley's thrown one little uh, rink windless defense. Tonight you'll see their number 65. Josh Harper, a 5'8", 230-pound, 8-pound junior, has been inserted into that defensive line. First down and 22, and they're going to throw it already. Wide receiver wide <laughs> open at the 38-yard line, and they just got it all back. 
thanks to Derek Derringer. You talked about not seeing them throw, and on the second play of the game, Bear, they make a liar of you. Well, that's the great thing. The reason their passing game can be so effective, you know, I think they've only thrown 15. You have to honor that run, first and you foremost. You have to honor the run. They've only completed 15 passes this year. Six of them have gone the distance for touchdowns. So uh, we see Christian Marsh there, the 6'3", 203-pound junior, and uh, gets Bridgeport off to a great start here. Inside handoff's going to get a couple, not much more. Of course, that was Chris Marsh on the reception. I thought it said 31. It was 81. Six foot, 203 pound junior. Great pass by Lindsay too. He faked it inside and went up top. We're going to talk a lot about Lindsay and especially his twin brother. A little bit of a size differential there, Bear. Just a little bit. Tim comes in at 6'5", 232 pounds. His twin brother, the quarterback, Chris, is only 6'1", 195. Quite a size differential for twins. And, of course, the big boy getting looks by West Virginia. We'll talk more about him a little bit later. Second down, 16 from the Polka 24. Inside handoff, not too much. That interior defensive line of Polka right there to make the stop. And that'll be one of the keys here this evening. Obviously, in any championship game, the defensive line, that line of scrimmage is going to be real, real crucial. And uh, we'll get a good look there. Steve White, 6'3", 210-pound sophomore with the stop for the Polka Dots. Third down and five from the 23. Steve's a little bit unusual, Dave. Uh, he's into one of your events, motocross. So uh, there you go. some of these high school youngsters are very versatile in this day and age. Indians need five for a first. They're going to get that first down, down near the 10. Number 21 on the carry. They're actually Winky. 24 on the carry. Yeah, Brandon Winky. Senior picks up the first down. Brandon Winky ran for over a thousand yards himself. He's the uh, little bit light in the pants, Coach uh, Carey said. But this kid is half heart, and uh, he's just an outstanding runner, and only 155 pounds. But as we said earlier, has picked up over 1,000 yards on the season. First down and 10 from the 12. Roarbaugh gets the carry, and there was some meat getting knocked around in there that time. <laughs> Once again, White well, we comes in and also Shamblin, Andrew Shamblin. For Shamblin the stop. We're going to be calling his name all evening long. They call him Super Slash. He's actually lined up at five or six different positions throughout his high school career. And uh, that's his brother's name's Jake's up on the screen, but that is actually Andrew Shamblin, number two. Second eight, and second down eight. Lindsay's going to keep it himself, cuts it back, touchdown, Bridgeport. Second down and eight from the 10-yard line. Lindsey keeps it himself, cuts it back, and the Indians draw first blood here in the AA championship. Well, Bruce Carey drew up a game plan. I'm certainly his intentions were to drive it down the court. The only thing is I think they scored a little bit quick, too quickly, Dave. Uh, the Bridgeport Indians, they like to have those 15, 16 play drives, but uh, nonetheless, they have seven points on the board, and that's the way where they want to be, Dave. They want to have that lead and make Poker chase them. Tyler Dodd on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Bridgeport Indians are on top, 7-0 with 9.05 to go first quarter. Double-A state championship from Wheeling Island Stadium. Nice crowd on hand. And, of course, they're all happy right now because their Indians are on top. Take a look at the touchdown once again by Chris Lindsay. Once you see again. the fake? Cuts it back and takes it in, and once again, that defense keying on Warbaugh. Well, the key is they actually have three very potent running backs. Lindsey, as we alluded to earlier, he's a big, strong kid, about 195. Actually played tackle in middle school and junior high, Dave, so he can tote it, and uh, they feature three backs. Of course, the up back gets the ball occasionally, but when you have three potent runners in that back, it's real tough for the defense to key on any one runner. Uh, Dave, that play, that was a seven-play drive, consumed 62 yards, took only two minutes and 55 seconds. Of course, the big play, ironically, was that pass play. So now we'll get to see what the Polka Dots can do on offense. They've had two backs, Thomas and Santmeyer, combining for over 2,100 yards on the ground. Thomas was the leader with 1,317 touchdowns. We talked about it earlier. 
When that guy decides to go to the air, it's Allen Berry. 70 of 140 passing for 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns. He's also been picked off 12 times and over 300 yards rushing. Uh, this young man, Daryl Thomas, had a play that was actually featured on ESPN a couple weeks ago, and I'm sure you're familiar with that, Dave. It was on a punt return where he actually did like a half round off, half cartwheel, stood on one hand, and uh, landed on his feet like a cat and went 82 yards for a touchdown, and uh, I understand it was on the plays of the week on ESPN, too. So uh, this youngster was uh, featured nationally. The Indians going to put the foot to it. Tyler Dodd kicks it away. The Dots take it at the 10, coming right up the middle of the field and stuck immediately. <laughs> Big number 72 for Bridgeport, Mike Burns, and also Ken Kerr in on the tackle. Ken Kerr making the stop for the Indians of the Bridgeport. Well, that was immediate. Well, that Ken, was a headache for a return man right there. Well, Coach Carey said at number 66, Kerr, he said, this fella can flat out hit you, and uh, pretty evident on that kick return. We'll take a look at the Dots offense right after this. Right off the get-go, they're going to try to put it up. Go up top, almost picked off at the 41. Penalty flags thrown. Looked like that time Derek Derringer might have gotten there a little too early and interfered with the intended receiver, Tony Sotelo. We see the indication there by the referee, Dave Clutter. Of course, it is indeed pass interference. Sotelo is an interesting story. 6'4", 221-pound sophomore started both ways as a mere freshman so uh this youngster is going to be a great one it's going to be against Sotelo so first down for the polka dots up at their 40 yard line 8.53 to go first quarter Bridgeport on top of polka 7 nothing. David Bloomquist, Tom Beckel, Mike Anthony from Wheeling Island Stadium, Double A State Championships. Allen Berry going to throw it again. Reception is made, but it's only going to be for about three yards. Complete to Daryl Thomas, 5'10, 180 pound senior. Berry Wiseman, Santmeyer, Thomas, Shamblin, Sotelo, Scott, Smith, Harper, Carter, and Burdett up front. Say, Santmeyer, a little undersized, the sophomore, only 5'7, 156 but also a very effective runner. Indians defense, Marsh Cook, Kerr, Floyd, and Lindsey will look, take a look at the rest of them after this play. Barry fakes the inside handoff. He's going to keep it. He's going to bring up third down at about five. Well, Coach Carey said at number 67, Joe Stout was the head hunter on this Bridgeport defense. Plays in the middle of that linebacking four, and uh, he'll be around that football all evening long. There's the rest of that Indians defense. Marsh, Cook, Kerr, Floyd, Lindsey. Oliverio, Stout, Derringer, Rohrbaugh, Green, and Wanky. Third down, four from the 46. Barry has some time. Goes over the middle. It's caught first down at the Indians 45. Andrew Shamblin calls that one in. Yeah, and that's a real important first down pickup. No way did Coach Lemley want to turn that football back over to the Indians and allow them to eat that valuable clock time. Early in this game, Polka wants to spread the field. They want to set up their running lanes for later on as the contest progresses. Very inside handoff gets absolutely nothing because big number 73 at Bridgeport was right there to sniff it out. Darren Floyd, 230-pound senior. Bridgeport has some big boys up front there. Well, Coach Carey said this young man right here, 73, Darren Floyd, is one of the best de defensive tackles we've ever had at Bridgeport. And considering their rich tradition, that's quite a statement. Second down 11 from the 46. Barry, going to try to put it up. Backside pressure, and Allen tucks it and gains maybe four. And the guy giving chase there, Tim Lindsay, 6'5", 232-pound senior, the twin brother, as we said earlier, of quarterback Chris Lindsay. 
Of course, these two youngsters, the Lindsay's actually had a brother that was a long snapper at WU just a few years ago. He played for the Indians in the mid 90s. We get a look at it here. Uh, Barry does have pretty good foot speed, and the junior here is going to take a pretty nice lick from a uh, real big fella, accompanied by number 67, Joe Stout, and uh, he's the best hitter on that Indian defense. Third down and six for Barry and company. Quick pitch. Got some room. There's the first down, and plenty more for the polka dots. Daryl Thomas on the carry, and he carried a couple Indians with him to get that first down and a couple more. Well, Daryl Thomas is their big time running back, possesses great speed, and uh, the last three weeks they've played at Lately Field in the playoffs, and uh, I guess this young fellow was certainly something to see on the asset curve down here at Charleston. Thomas has rushed for over 1,300 yards this season. 17 scores. Fake it outside, fumbled football, and it's picked up by Bridgeport. But the officials, I believe, are they, yes, they are saying Bridgeport football. The Indians jumped on it. Joe Stout, it looked like, jumped on that football as they tried a little misdirection, the polka dots did, and they just could not get the handoff off because of that inside pressure. You'll see it. Well, trying to see who made the play there. Bridgeport defense did a great job of blowing that play up, and uh, we talked about Stout being an outstanding hitter. He's also Johnny on a spot with a fumble recovery. Indians go inside. They pick up nearly nine on first down. Brandon Weinke. Dave, I know it's real early in this contest. We're not even halfway through the first period, but this is a crucial, crucial possession. The Indian, Indians, if they can take the ball down the field and get a 14-point lead, they're virtually unbeatable. So Hoken needs to really dig in and get a stop on this series. Coach Lemley has to be distraught about that drive because it was a good drive. They had flow, they had something going, and then to have that happen, you're right, Bear, this could be disastrous. Well, the, the entire Indian offense is predicated on not making mistakes. Conversely, on the defensive side of the ball, they want to take advantage of your turnovers. Uh, they'll do it slowly, Dave. They love the 16 play drives. They don't want to score in four plays is what Coach Carey told me, so they're going to try to grind this one out. Polk, on the other hand, needs to, to get it, come up with a big stop. Wanky on that last carry. If they score here, it could be a 14-point swing, you know, if, if Polka could have taken it down and scored. Inside handoff again to the big guy, Rohrbaugh, and he is close to another first down. It looks like he did get it. The amazing thing about their 13-0 run this year for the Indians, Dave, is They've rebuilt that offensive line. Only Darren Floyd, number 73, and the big guy, Tim Lindsay, returned on that offensive front. The skill positions in Lindsay and Rohrbaugh Rohrba are, are outstanding players that return. And they also had another young man, Mike Haunts. He was a returning tailback from last year. Unfortunately, he actually suffered two broken arms, one during the baseball season and again in a game against R.C. Bird this year, a game he actually played the entire contest. So. Uh, you know, the Indians have done a great job of retooling that offensive line. I'll tell you, on that carry in particular, Jason Clausen and I believe Joe Stout, if he's the right guard, did a great job of opening a hole there. There was absolutely nobody within a five-yard vicinity of Rohrball when he came through there. Well, it's been a case all season long. That offensive line has been very consistent, and quite frankly, they haven't needed to pass. First down, 10 carry. Wanky gets the carry, and he's not going to get too much. About three dots jump on him to stop him for a minimal gain. And uh, Coach Carey just couldn't say enough about this little guy. We had a good look at uh, Brandon there. Not real big, only about 155 in the program, but uh, this little guy certainly typifies the heart of the Bridgeport football team. Six foot, 155 pound senior. They need nine for a first. Rohrball gets the carry, and he gets hit immediately. Looked like big number 32 for the Dots got in there, James Weissman, 5'9", 185-pound junior. The coach Lemley said prior to the game, a couple of the keys were, one, they had to hold him to under three yards on first and second down. The next thing is they'd like to make him punt. Quite honestly, that's something that the Indians haven't done much. Only one punt in three playoff games this year, Dave. Third down and six from the Poker 44. Wanky trying to find some room and he's not going to find it. Great pursuit, 
to string it out by the polka dots before finally Daryl Thomas brings him down. I'll tell you, one of the fellas that doesn't get mentioned in this Bridgeport offense is the outback, number 23, Chris Bird. And once again, 155 pounders, not real big, but uh, Coach Carey said he's one tough kid. And, uh, you know, last week he was having a tough time of it trying to block some real big fellas, but Coach Carey said he's one of the guys he goes full speed even when he knows that it's a 240 pound line and he has to attack. So the Indians will punt. Lindsay puts it up and it's a pretty good one, but it's gonna go a little bit too far into the end zone and the Dots are gonna take over at their own 20. 3.04 remaining, first quarter. Bridgeport on top, seven to nothing as they try to win their second consecutive state title and remain unbeaten over 28 games. Dave, that would just be an amazing accomplishment. In the history of the uh, playoffs in West Virginia, there's been 135 champions. Only 16 times has anyone ever repeated as champion. No one's ever done it with back-to-back 14-0 records, so that would certainly be quite a goal here for the uh, Indians this evening. Of course, Bridgeport won last season. They beat Wayne 14 to six. Their last state championship before that, 1986, when they beat Tucker County 10 to seven. Yeah, Bridgeport's just had a great tradition. And uh, one game I remember in particular, Dave, uh, back in 1988, I had the pleasure of working contest under Coach Jamison. They won a uh, victory over Winfield in four overtimes. We'll talk about that later. Good crowd on hand, seven nothing, double A state championship. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back after this. First down to 10, Polka Dots. Gonna try to get it going again, Allen Berry. Quarterback keeper, Berry still dancing, has to get out of the way of the referee, and he picks up some great yardage, and it will move the chains. Great job of shaking and baking by number 22. He had nothing initially, but he definitely made something out of nothing. What's real important, if the Dots are gonna win here tonight, Allen Berry is gonna have to have a pretty big evening. He's gonna have to do a good job of leading his team. We get a look at it here on uh, the replay, and uh, Berry, Sees the opening to his right and uh, does a nice job of breaking a few tackles and a uh, real nice pickup for the junior signal caller. Indians did a good job of keeping containment. They just didn't tackle it. Bridgeport is a very solid defense. They will stay home. It's going to be tough for these trick plays to work tonight because Bridgeport's real solid fundamentally. Quick toss by the Dots. Another first down out near the 46-yard line. That was a real quick toss out to Darrell Thomas. And at the end of that run, he made an Indian pay for that tackle. We talked about Daryl, you know, that was, there's Wanky there. Uh, but uh, Daryl Thomas has had seven straight 100-yard games throughout the season. And uh, don't First mind. down and 10 from the 45. <laughs> Inside handoff gets absolutely nothing this time. Don't mind me, Dave. I got my teams mixed up. I've, I've <laughs> That's got, all right, Barry. I've got six teams in my mind right now, but uh, <laughs> I'm about to work through that. But, yeah, Daryl Thomas has just been a great runner all season long. Last week he was held well in check by Magnolia. Uh, only had 16 carries and uh, didn't pick up much yardage. And actually seven of those 16 rushes were for negative yardage. So uh, the Magnolia Blue Eagles did a great job of containing him. And uh, tonight he'd certainly like to have a big game. Of course, my compadre here, Mr. Bechtel, always does the Super 6 for us. He has, as he said, six teams running through his mind right now. Great defensive stop by the Indians that time. That's Rohrbaugh on the tackle. He has six teams. You've been prepping for a week. You've got stuff on every kid, every name. You've got Martinsburg, Parkersburg, Wheeling Central, Moorefield, Polka, and Bridgeport running through your mind at the same time. Yeah, You're going nuts, aren't you? Right now, the one fellow that I should have on my mind is CR right there. He's just an outstanding young man. And you're going to hear his name called on offense and defense. And uh, as we talked about, he actually ran cross country. Coach Carey says, I have to keep him on the field because when he comes to the sideline, he drives me nuts. 
Third down and 15, Barry gonna put it up deep. Great defense out on the corner that time, nothing doing. Number 24, Brandon Weinke, all over that play. So the Dots are gonna have to punt after a couple of good runs early. Well, tell you, we see number four there, Satello, and he's a rangy target, 6'4", 221, only a sophomore, and uh, you're certainly gonna hear that name around Polka for several years to come. We'll get another look at it there, Dave, and uh, just a little bit too tall for the uh, rangy receiver. Rohrbaugh back deep for the Indians. High snap, great job to grab it and get the punt off. Rohrbaugh takes it to 21. Good special teams coverage that time by the Polka Dots and what an effort by Allen Berry to get up and grab that high snap. That could have been absolute disaster for the Dots. Well, that's one of the luxuries of having your quarterback as the punter. He had good hands, and as you said, that could have been disastrous, but uh, Allen Berry makes a big play on the uh, Aaron snap. Berry does everything for those polka dots. As we alluded to earlier, he had four interceptions in the semifinal game against Magnolia last week. That's a double-A state uh, playoff record. Returned two of them for touchdowns in what blew open a very close 7 nothing game in the fourth quarter. A lot of motion up front. We have Laundry reining in on the field. You know, I've always believed in that, Tom, in you put your best athlete where he's going to have his hands on the ball all the time. That would be at quarterback. That would be at punter. Uh, I want my best athlete to carry that football or touch it more than anybody on the team. Well, Dave, I've always agreed with that. And, you know, I kind of cringe sometimes when I see those big number 75s as punters. They may indeed be your best kicker, but I like that, that fellow back there because when the snap is bad, when it does bounce, they can make things happen. And, uh, we see Allen Berry there, only a junior, but he's really come into his own this year as the starting quarterback for the Dots, and uh, we'll talk about his cornerback position as the game moves on. First down of 15 from their own 28. Lindsey pitches it outside to Wanky. He gets a couple, but not too much. Good defense that time by the Polka Dots. We've seen the little guy, uh, number one, Matt Santmeyer, the uh, smallish sophomore assisting on that tackle. Daryl Thomas also out there for the Dots. Going to bring up second down and 11. We're approaching the end of the first quarter. Seven to nothing. Bridgeport on top of Polka. You can see it again. Good defense to string this out before Wanky can turn the shoulders square up and get some other positive yardage. Here we go again. Lindsay the other way. This time he's going to keep it. He's caught from behind. James Weissman from the linebacking position. The junior grabs Lindsay around the ankles and brings up third down and six. Wiseman, he's really improved. He's a steady player on that defensive line, and uh, Coach Lemmy felt he would be one of the keys here this evening. Chris Lindsay's going to come over and talk it over with his coach. We played one. Seven to nothing. Bridgeport on top of Polka. Double A state championship from Wheeling Island Stadium. We'll be back. Welcome back to Wheeling Island Stadium. David Bloomquist, Tom Bechtel, Mike Anthony, Bridgeport on top of Polka, seven to nothing. The Indians taking over, facing a third down and six from their 36. Inside handoff, not gonna get it. And the Dots defense once again up to the challenge, and they're gonna get the football back. 
Well, you're exactly correct, Dave. They are up for the challenge, and that was real, real important. They need to get the football and make something happen. That was the 17th offensive play for the Indians. They have ran 16 times. You know, we talk about these two teams. We've talked about both their playoff experiences, their success in the postseason, their offensive styles. And we have two coaches here who uh, different ends of the spectrum bear as far as experience goes. Yeah, Coach Lemley is actually in his 32nd year at Polka. Nice punt by Lindsey. Taken way back at the 13-yard line. And the dot is mauled. The dot is a dot on that return. I think that was Alan Berry who grabbed that one, but you were talking about these coaches, Bear? Yeah, and uh, Coach Carey's been there five years at Bridgeport. Of course, he uh, you know, had the ultra-successful season last year at 14-0, and, 0, and uh, he's continued a tradition. Uh, coach Jameson coached 25 years for the Indians. He was a legendary coach, and uh, Coach Carey's simply taken the ball and continued to run with it. Speaking of running, that's what the Dots are trying to do, and it's not going to get a much, maybe one yard on first down. Well, they certainly would like to get this young man untracked, as we talked about. In the regular season, he had an outstanding effort against uh, Magnolia, and uh, last week simply couldn't get it going. And, uh, you know, Magnolia did a great job of containing him and uh, tackling him in the offensive backfield. They did get two, second down and eight from their own 17. Very quick hitter over the middle to Sotelo, and he gets stuck one yard short of the first down. Actually, Andrew Shamblin, excuse me. Yeah, that was my man, Super Slash. There you go. Uh, he makes Cart uh, Cordell Stewart look like a rookie. This young man has played center, fullback, tight end, split end, defensive end, and did a little long snapping. And uh, this year, he also volunteered to move the middle linebacker. So uh, it's easy to see why Andrew Shamblin has picked up the title of Super Slash. Third down and one from the 24. Inside handoff, Piles not moving too much. Forward progress, I believe, gets the Dots the first down. On that page, it looked like the uh, Dots took a page out of the Indian uh, playbook and uh, pick up a crucial first down. Just power football, line them up and see who can win that battle in trenches. That time it was Polka. Barry going to the air again, a little too quick to the outside. Just didn't give Derek Holmes enough time to really get turned around and see the football. Yeah, I think the timing on that play was just a little bit off, and he could have just held that football just a, another split second. Uh, I think Holmes would have been able to come up with that big reception. Of course, Polk is the type of offense that they are going to mix it up, Dave. Uh, you know, you can look for them to throw on first down and. Uh, I like to keep referring to the fact that they will try a trick play somewhere here this evening. We all remember that fake punt back in 96, but uh, somewhere tonight you're going to see a halfback throw pass or something of the razzle-dazzle variety. Second down and 10, run the option. Trying to get to the outside, and the Dots do. It's Daryl Thomas, and he gets hammered at the end of that play by Ford Green. And he's real close to a first down. And that is simply a big-time lick by Mr. Green, 6'3", junior. Uh, they said he's learning more and more about the game of football each week, and we get a good look at Ford there, and uh, that is just a big-time stick by that youngster. Leads the Indians with interceptions this season. Ford had the target zeroed in. That's for sure. Third down and one now. Inside handoff. We'll take a look at that hit here in a little bit. And it was a big hit by Ford. Not too much doing there on that run play by the Dots. But we see as this game progresses, uh, we're going to get another look here at the big time hit. And uh, keep an eye on number 22, Ford Green. And boy, he just delivers the blow and knocks him out of bounds. But that was a small pickup day. But it, more importantly, it picked up a key first down. And uh, the Dots starting to establish a little bit of that running game. Barry on the keeper, stopped immediately by Darren Floyd. 
230 pound senior. Now we have some penalty flags coming in late. We'll look for the indication here by the referee, Mr. Clutter. Preliminary signal is, uh, I think we all know that one real well, Dave. Yep. Little clip action. Of course, Dave, one of the premier officials, obviously, in the state of West Virginia. He's been working this game for about 28 years, and uh, he's the son of also a veteran official who officiated the state playoffs on many occasions. And uh, I believe for Dave, this is his third state championship game appearance. So once again, Polka gets a drive going, and whether it's a turnover or a penalty, they just seem to back themselves up right when they think they have something going. First down and 25. Barry going to put it up deep, and the timing way off on that one. And there's a penalty flag, a late flag. And boy, I don't know about this one. Yeah, I didn't get a real good look at the play, but... Uh, Matt Santmeyer was the intended receiver. I don't think that ball was even near catchable. And basically what happened was the defensive back just ran into it. Dave, on high school football, that's Doesn't not, matter. not really a factor, correct. A lot of people uh, mistake that with the collegiate game. On the high school level, catchability is not a factor. You may not interfere or impede his progress. And uh, I know I didn't really get a good look out there, but Santmeyer obviously is pleading his case. And uh, obviously the referee bought into his request. Yeah, this pass, you can see it right here, was well over the head. But as you said earlier, it doesn't matter if a play is catchable or not. I think that was just a case where the Indians defensive back was looking at the football and just crossed legs with the intended receiver. Of course, we talk about the collegiate game. A lot of look like the polka dots were going down to the spot of the foul. And we all know in the high school game, it's simply a 15-yard mark off. So it may have been a good penalty. Barry, pitch outside. Uh-uh, war ball there for the stop. Well, either way, even though it's a spot of the, uh, not the spot of the infraction, it was still a, an automatic first down when Polka was looking at first down and 25, in, or actually second and 25 with that incompletion, and instead they got first down and 10. Yeah, obviously, Dave, it's a very huge play and uh, puts Polka back in business with that first and 10, but uh, once again, CR, he's been the story of the evening, and uh, this young man's name's just going to be called throughout the evening. Second down, 11. Barry looking to the air again, quick hitter. Nothing doing, good coverage by the Indians. Brandon Weinke right there to cut that one off. Intended receiver number 84, Derek Holmes. One of the, one of the keys this evening, Dave, I think is gonna be if, if uh, Alan Barry can pull the trigger. He can't allow the Indians to sack him. Last week he had some problems in that Magnolia game and we see right there, that ball may have been tipped by the oncoming uh, offensive lineman. Third down and 11, 8.43 to go first half. Bridgeport on top of Polka, 7-0. Huge conversion opportunity here for Polka. Barry, lots of time going down the middle of the field, overshoots the receiver and almost picked off at the 39-yard line. That went right into the hands of Ford Green, and he dropped it. Well, he's a very dependable defensive back. He's led the Indians, and we see there he's a rather rangy defensive back at 6-3, kind of unusual on the high school level. We get a look at it here again. Uh, Allen Berry does possess a nice strong arm and uh, football just a little overthrown and uh, Green just about came up with that pick. You know, Barry, it almost seems as though Barry is rushing his throws. You can tell they're all predicated on timing and that time of shanked punt. Gets a good roll though and it's gonna be down at the 32 yard line but it looks like Barry is letting go of that football earlier than he wants, maybe thinking that that Bridgeport rush is going to be in his face when realistically he has a little more time than I think he thinks he does. Well, you know, last week in that semifinal win over Magnolia, he was got some heavy heat. So obviously that's in the back of his mind, and uh, he's certainly cognizant of that outstanding defense that mm -hmm. Bridgeport possesses. So I, I think the coaches do want him to pull the trigger tonight, not take any sacks, but yeah, he needs to relax just a little more, and uh, I'm sure he will as the evening progresses. All right, but he's got to give his receivers a chance to make a play, too. The, the ball is either over their heads or right on them before they even know it's there. Yeah, not one of the prettier kicks you're going to see this year, but uh, I think the net result was about a 32-yard punt, so uh, Allen, Allen's not real happy with that one, but uh, the results came out pretty good. Of course, number 22 is the backbone of this polka dot team, defensive back, quarterback. He does it all. 5'10", 154-pound junior. So we have another year of hearing of Alan Berry. 
Yeah, of course, he set that playoff record last week that uh, may never be broken. You know, he broke that game wide open. They scored four touchdowns in only three minutes and 21 seconds. Indians on top of the dots, seven nothing. David Bloomquist, Tom Bechtel, Mike Anthony from Wheeling Island Stadium. Double A state championship, game number one of three of the Super Six championship weekend here from Wheeling, West Virginia. Lindsay, inside handoff, big hole this time. Brandon Weinke into poking territory, drug down from behind by Daryl Thomas, where Weinke would have been gone. Well, it's real tough to key on any one back because uh, Weinke is just an outstanding running back. And, uh, you know, obviously we've talked about Roar Ball all night long, but uh, this young little fella can really tote the football and, uh, it's just real tough to stop that Indian offense when you have two running backs of this caliber. When you talk about war ball, I mean, 28 touchdowns, 1,700 yards, but Weinke went over 1,000 yards this season also. So you're looking at a backfield that is combined when you throw in the third guy back there for, for probably over 3,000 yards rushing. Well, I think you're exactly correct. And, uh, you know, they obviously have gotten it down done on the ground all season long, and uh, you don't do that. I don't care how outstanding your line is without some outstanding running backs, and uh, this senior combination has certainly been lethal all season long. Of course, Weinke's 155 pounds. You get hit with him, then War Ball comes through at 195. This is Weinke again, and he gets hammered. He got absolutely crushed as soon as he got into the line that time by number 23, Steve White, it looked like. Also number 53 in the bunch, Ryan Burdett. Yeah, I think Burdett was the one that gave that big time lick there, and uh, you know he came up for that linebacking position and uh, just delivered a crushing blow. Burdett's 221 pounds, 6'1". He's a senior. I'll tell you, he's one of the seniors on this defense, but it is a very young defensive unit. They've actually had five and six sophomores playing on occasion for the polka dots. Third down and six. Lindsey slips, and he's not going to get it. And more importantly here, Tom, is Bruce Carey and company in four-down territory at their at the 46-yard line or 42-yard line of Polka. Uh, I think it's going to be decision-making time here, and uh, they've only punted once in three playoff games, and uh, we'll see if, uh, yeah, I don't think Coach Carey's going to get too risky here, Dave. So well, they I, punted twice here today already, and here's the third one. Well, that was one of the objectives that Coach Lemley had was we need to make them punt. We can't allow them to possess the football. So, uh, so far here in the early going, the uh, Polka Dots have been successful. Lindsay. Kicking it to the corner, nice high punt. Hits at the 10 and a good punt by Lindsey. The Dots will take over at their own nine yard line. Well, the Indians like to establish field position and you know, Lindsey's a pretty capable kicker when called upon and uh, that would only go in the record books as a 32 yard punt, but uh, very effective anytime you kick it out around that 10 yard line. And once again, you have one of your best athletes back at punter and you know a high school kid has been coached well and you know what he, he knows what he's doing when he's punting the football. When A number one, he can angle it like that. Number two, when you see him kick a spiral. Both of these punters have kicked spirals. And of course, from that position on the field, there's always that threat of the fake kick. So uh... big hole inside. Gain of about seven on first down by Santmeyer, and if he doesn't slip, he could have tacked on maybe 10 more. Well, Santmeyer is another one of those fine, young-looking running backs, and, uh, you know, he's been a big-time player all season long. He's also contributed on the defensive side, but uh, Santmeyer, a fine-looking, quick running back. We're approaching five minutes to go, second quarter, 7-0, Bridgeport on top of Polka. Dots facing second down and two from their 18. Weissman was in motion, inside handoff. They're going to get the first down and move the chains. Santmeyer again on the carry. Well, Santmeyer, you know, in a regular season had five touchdowns, ran for over 600 yards. He's also their leading receiver during a regular season with a little over 300 yards receiving. So, uh, this young sophomore has certainly been a very focal point in that uh, Polka offense. 
you know, as we're approaching the end of the first half, I don't think either of us would have guessed this would be a 7-0 football game, that we would have seen one touchdown here in two quarters of play. Of course, there's still time left. And Daryl Thomas is going to try to do something about it as he dives to try to get another first down. You know, for the Dots, Bear, from where they take over with the football, for about the first 30 yards, they look great. You know, they pick up a couple first downs, they have a couple big runs, but inevitably, so far in this first half, they end up just dying. Their drives die for whatever reason. A penalty, a fumble, or just plain old, they run out of gas. Well, they're a younger football team, Dave, and uh, they haven't established those long drives like Bridgeport, but they need to break a big play. They need to make something happen. And, uh, you know, honestly, though, these first down pickups have been crucial because they've kept the football out of the hands of that very, very potent Bridgeport offense. So, uh, you know, right now, I think Coach Lemley, other than that first turnover, has to be relatively pleased. And I'm sure he'd love to get down and get something in something on the scoreboard prior to the half. Well, I think if things were to work out perfectly for Coach Lemley and the Dots, obviously they would like to get a lead on this Bridgeport team in the second half and force them to throw the football, which is something that is not their strong point. Outside call again, and on first down, a pickup of seven yards. That's what they've got to keep doing. Daryl Thomas with the tough run. Once again, we always talk about the all-important first down play, and uh, Anytime you can pick up seven yards on that first down gives you a lot of opportunities on second down. There's a lot of plays that can be called with that second and three or second and four, Dave, but, uh, you know, gives Coach Lemley the uh, chance to have some good play calling on this situation. Second down and four from the 40. Santmeyer gets to the outside, uses his wheels, and he picks up another first down. Great run by number one. We said this little fella is extremely quick, and, uh, Bridgeport is about as fundamentally sound as you're going to see on the defensive side of the football. But when you've got a little guy with, like Matt with quick feet, uh, he picks up another important first down. Clock continues to tick. Three and a half minutes to go, first half. Dots have a very nice drive going, and it started at their nine-yard line. They're now out to the 48. Boy, they have some meat up front, too, on that offensive line. Barry, lots of time to throw. Right down the middle, throw is high, and it's incomplete. He wanted Sotelo, and he had 6-4 of target to hit. But you could tell when he released that football, he released it high. I'll tell you, the offensive line, though, we talked about that being one of the keys here this evening. You know, Burdett, 53, Carter, 74, Harper, Smith, and Scott have done a reasonably good job here in the first half of providing protection for uh, Allen Berry, and uh, we get a good look there at some of the big guys that are on that line of scrimmage. Okay, the center there, Josh Harper, 5'8", uh, excuse me, 5'8", 238-pound junior, has uh, done a nice job of creating that pocket. Barry, lots of time again, throws it out, almost intercepted, and we have a penalty flag down in the backfield, which usually indicates a hold. Yeah, that usually doesn't bode well for the offensive team, and uh, we'll try not to second guess here, but we see the indication there, there of holding by the referee. Once again, as I said earlier, Polka starts a nice drive, and then inevitably something goes wrong. Yeah, well, against a solid defensive team like Bridgeport, you simply cannot have 15-yard penalties. There's just not enough plays in your playbook that's going to work against this fundamentally sound defense that does stay home. So uh, I'm sure Coach Lemley is going to try to make some adjustments at halftime and uh, certainly cut out these uh, major penalties. So the hold scoots it back to the 34-yard line of Polka and brings up second down and 24 when they had a first down and 10 at midfield. Yeah, I think the big story of this first half, if uh, Polk indeed can't get down and get on the scoreboard, is going to be that crucial turnover on their first drive, Dave, and these two big 15-yard penalties that have essentially thwarted, thwarted their drives. Barry in trouble, and he's going to get sacked. Way back at the 26-yard line. Big number 73 for the Indians gets in there, Darren Floyd. 
We talked about Darren. He's just simply one of the best defensive tackles you're going to see on any level in the state of West Virginia. And uh, he's pretty quick for his size. And uh, when you're 230 pounds, that's uh, saying a whole lot. So now Poker went from great field position to third down and 30. And if they have to punt it away, Bridgeport's going to get great field position. At least before from midfield, if they're stopped, they could pin them back deep. Fake punt by Barry. Hand off to Sant Myers. He tries to get around the side, and he does. Tries to cut it back, run out of bounds that time by Ken Kerr. But it's a nice game, and it gives him a little more room to get off a halfway decent punt. But just a little bit of razzle dazzle there. We haven't seen a quick kick for quite a while, Dave, and uh, the old fake quick kick, and uh, the little guy, Santa Myers, certainly shows that he can scoot up that left sideline. Coach Carey. Looking for that second consecutive state title. His team leads 7 0. They're going to get the football back with two minutes to work with. Barry gets it off. It's a low kick. Rohrbaugh is just going to let it roll, and it rolls down to the 24 yard line. You know, you were talking about the stories of this first half, but I think the story of this first half is the Polka defense, Tom, because this team, Bridgeport, came in here averaging almost 400 yards rushing per game that's per game they're coming off a 50 point win over Grafton then they scored 38 against Wyoming East and then they scored 41 last week against Williamstown so yeah. coach Lemley's defense is playing outstanding oh he has to be really impressed with the defensive play and uh, you know the Indians came in averaging 43 points a game against playoff competition that's incredible, and to say that they've held him to seven yards, uh, you know, he has to be real, real proud. And I know Jim Abshire, he jokingly said that they needed to put 13 in the box prior to the game to stop this Indian offense, but uh, quite honestly, the defense has been very, very solid in this first half. 2-0-9 left to go, first half. Bridgeport's going to have the football when we come back. You know, late in the half, they may indeed put it in the air, but uh, they're not going to vary much from that just bruising running game. And, uh, you know, they've only attempted 39 passes in 13 games, so uh, you're just not going to see that football in the air too often. Second down and seven for the 27. Lindsey keeps it on his hip, and absolutely nothing going on. Great defensive pursuit by James Wiseman. And a couple other counterparts. We'll see on the replay who all got in there. I mean, it was a contingent of defenders for the Polka Dots. I'll tell you, the Polka defense, we talked about uh, Bridgeport being solid fundamentally. Polka's done a great job of staying home, and uh, we'll get a look at it here. As you said, 32, and uh, just couldn't pick up that another number. Looks but, like Steve White, number 23, also in on the tackle. Yeah, I think it might have been Steve. Dots have taken a timeout with one minute and 23 seconds to go. And Bridgeport facing a third down and nine. Obviously, that was the game plan. Let's see what they do on their first two downs. If they pick up some decent yardage, we'll let the clock wind out as far as poker was concerned. If we stop them, maybe we'll get the ball back and be able to do something. And if they do stop them here, they should get the football back with just about a minute to go in decent field position. We talked about that wide open poke offense, and uh, they certainly could make something happen in this last minute. But, you know, I think taking a look there at Coach Lemley, he has to be extremely pleased in terms of trying to reach his goal. He said he wanted to hold him down on first down. They've done a pretty good job of that other than the first drive and the one big pass play. And uh, they wanted to make him punt, which he indeed has done. And uh, he talked about the need to make first downs and the Polka leads in first down so far. So they've certainly accomplished all their short-term goals. Big play, both teams, third down and nine. Inside handoff, Warbaugh. Gets a couple, and the Dots are going to get pretty good field position depending on where this punt lands with about a minute to work with. Well, Andrew Shamblin, number two, is one of the leaders of this team, and uh, he did a great job. He's one of the co-captains, and uh, they're going to elect to call another timeout with 1-12 remaining, and the uh, Polka Dots would still like to make something happen here late in this first half. Let's go. Watch it. Let's go. Watch it. Go. Come on. 
Minute 12 on the clock. Polka burns another timeout, leaves him with one. And they're set to get the football back. For any of the fans at home wondering where they got this unique nickname that was rated as the number one high school nickname in all the country just a few years ago by ESPN, way back in 1928, their uh, original coach, uh, the, their nickname was actually the Pocatello Co or whatever, Indians. And uh, they were playing an opponent, I believe it was Milton, and the, the, their opponent was taunting them, calling them the Polka Dots. And their coach said, we like that name, we'll, we'll adopt that name, and we're going to make everybody in West Virginia fear the Polka Dots. And uh, it's been around for three quarters of a century since that time. Just a wealth of knowledge you are. Uh, somewhere in my notes, I believe that was Walter Purdy was the uh, first coach for Polka. <laughs> How many animals were on the arc? <laughs> a wealth of useless knowledge, I may add. Good punt by Lindsey. All the way to the 30-yard line, taken by Daryl Thomas. Thomas just turns it up, and the dots are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Wonderful punt by Lindsey to pin Polka way, way back, farther than they thought they would be. We see Daryl there. Uh, he doesn't shy away from contact, and we talked about that outstanding punt return of 82 yards. Uh, several games ago and uh, we'll see on the replay here he's not running away from the tackler and I uh, hope we get a good look at this one uh, Daryl's gonna catch the ball and uh, heads upfield and uh, he's gonna lower his shoulder and go right at the defender but uh, unfortunately for him there were three or four Indians in the area you know we are seeing two excellent punters here tonight in this football game it's something you don't see in high school I don't think enough coaches practice it I don't think they get their best kids like you said your best athletes back there to punt it's not often you see 40 yards punt 40 yard punts in high school Oh, and it's picked off, or is it? No, it's ruled incomplete. And I think Coach Lemley, after that pass, is going to go, okay, let's run a couple, and let's go in down 7-0, because that had to give him a heart attack. Dave, that comment you made about the punters is entirely true. I know tomorrow there's going to be some outstanding kickers on this field, and uh, kind of uh, interesting that all the teams that remain in the state finals, uh, most of them have pretty good kicking games, and uh, I'm sure that's a real, real important important part of all their uh, championship runs. It just showed you how pivotal it was right there. A normal high school kicker, Polka's going to take over probably at midfield, but Lindsay gets a real good boot off, and they're all the way back to their 35. Barry going to put it up deep. He has a receiver open, and he just overshoots Sant Meyer. He could have taken a little bit off of that. Then the Polka would have been in business at about the Bridgeport 30. Great matchup on that play, Sant Sant Meyer. We talked about he's the speedy sophomore and uh, great coverage by number 22, Ford Green, the uh, outstanding junior defensive back for the Indians. Third down and 10, 48 seconds left to go in the first half. Inside handoff stopped immediately by Ken Kerr, that 226-pounder who roams that middle. Kerr's only a junior. 37 seconds left to go, and Bridgeport now is thinking offensively. They're taking a timeout thinking, hey, we could do something with 37 seconds. I'll tell you exactly what they're thinking. They're thinking about that block punt last year by number 12, Joel Horn, that was uh, very crucial in that victory. They got it in the first half, and... Uh, I'm sure that's exactly what Coach Perry's thinking, that one of these big guys like number 66, Ken Kerr there, can break through and uh, block this punt attempt by Barry. Well, the special teams of Bridgeport came through on that last punt. We'll see what the polka dot special teams can do. It'll be Barry back there punting away. And if you're Mr. Barry, you're not concerned about how far you kick this one. You just, just want to off. get it off quickly and... Uh, I'm sure Bridgeport's going to come with an all-out rush here and attempt to block it. I'm put this in the Number 66 has had a big game so far for the Indians. Ken Kerr been all over the field, got a sack. Let's see if he can do anything here on special teams. Barry gets it. Short, low kick. And the Indians will take over at their 43-yard line with 29 seconds to work with. It wasn't the great kick, didn't have a lot of hang time, but we see there Steve White, the 6'3", 210-pound sophomore, did a great job of kick coverage and uh, 
We get a look at it here again. Allen Berry gets the kick off with no pressure and uh, didn't hang up real long, but uh, Mr. White did a great job of getting down and covering that kick. Here we go for the Indians, 24 seconds. Lindsey rolling out, pitches to Rohrbaugh. Turns it up, gets three. Tackle that time by Sotelo. Timeout, Bridgeport. They still have one left. And I'm sure they still have one passing play left in that repertoire somewhere, Dave, and uh, I would expect if they're ever gonna make, a, make an attempt to pass the ball with uh, 20 seconds remaining in this half, we just might see the football in the air. Mike Anthony is down on the sidelines. Michael, what do you have for us? Well, guys, pretty entertaining game so far and a huge crowd here Friday night. It's good to see that, and the Super 6 folks down here are very happy about this crowd here, and boy, what a game. And if you recall, Tom, and fans watching this game, Bridgeport won last year's game by a touchdown, and when they blocked a punt from Wayne and then they recovered in the end zone. So that was a tough knit game last year, as is this one right now. So I don't think many are surprised this could go to the wire, and it's only a one-touchdown game so far in the first half. We'll have a little uh, halftime stuff with Coach Carey here in just a few seconds. Back up to you. Thank you, Michael. Second out of five from the 48. Inside and off. War ball again. Big hole. 40, 35, 30. Caught from the backside, and we have flags everywhere, and I think this is going to be a clip on Santmeyer. Santmeyer didn't do it. Somebody clipped him, and I believe it's number 24 for the Indians, Brandon Weinke. That's once what it is. Once again, Dave, you're always correct on those calls, and uh, that's about as wide open as you're going to see the Bridgeport Indian football, and uh, hopefully we'll get to take a look at it here on the replay, and uh, anytime you give the ball to this youngster, he's possibly going to take it for the distance, and uh, obviously the clip happened outside the screen, but nonetheless, it's going to be a 15-yard mark off, and uh, with only 12 ticks remaining, Bridgeport will have the ball out around midfield. We can see it again. You can see the clip at the bottom of the screen. It negates a 29-yard effort by Rohrbaugh. Maybe we can see it later. Here it comes. Watch number 24, bottom of your screen, coming up right there. Yeah, no on doubt the about that one. Uh, on Santmeyer. Good work down in the truck, guys, and uh, we're going to get a stop at the clock, the stoppage of the game here. Well, time has run off the clock, but it's not halftime. The officials are saying, hold on one second. Clock should have stopped with the penalty. Dave, the clock did indeed run out, but the game cannot, or the quarter cannot end with an accepted personal foul, so we're gonna have what's called an untimed down. And uh, that's why the referee quickly run in, ran in and uh, stopped the action. The clock had run out. It had ticked off the three zeros. We will now have a one untimed down. You know, there's a reason we pay you big bucks. <laughs> Second down and three from the 49. Big rush. Middle screen to Rohrbaugh. Still on his feet. Rohrbaugh has some blockers. Taken down at the 28-yard line, and that's going to be it. And the Indians, a couple players ripping their helmets off, not happy. They're frustrated. And they probably should be. They are not used to being shut down, and that's exactly what has happened to them here in the first half. Even though they lead this game 7 to nothing over the Polka Dots, both defenses, Tom, you would have to say, played extremely well here in the first half. Yeah, as you would expect in a championship tilt, there is going to be strong, outstanding defensive play. Uh, Dave, the Bridgeport Indians have trailed four times on the season. Let's we'll go down to Mike with Coach Carey. Mike? Well, Coach, you're a half away from another state championship. Are you happy? No, not at all. Uh, we're not playing very well out there. Uh, you know, defensively, we're not doing bad. Offensively, you know, we're better than this. I don't know. We're going to have to get some uh, adjustments here at halftime. Great first drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think we kind of relaxed after that like it was going to be easy, and now it's not. And So now we've got to put a little fire up the butt. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you very much. Coach Bruce Carey of the Bridgeport Indians, guys. Well, I said, Bear, the players weren't happy, and obviously neither is Coach. As I said, not used to being shut down like this. You take away that first drive, and this team has done absolutely nothing, which is a credit to that Dots defense. Well, there's no doubt about it, and, you know, they've only thrown one pass, but obviously that was the key component in that first drive where they took it right down the field. Uh, they're accustomed to scoring about 43 points a game in the playoffs, and uh, this is quite unusual, but... In the state championship, you have to expect it's going to be a strong defensive struggle. Super 6, Class AA Championship, 7-0. Indians on top of the dots. We'll take a break and come back with the bands.
Great job by the Polka Dots Marching Band. Now it's time for the Bridgeport Indians to take over the field. We're going to sit back and watch and listen once again.
Halftime is history, 24 minutes away from seeing who's going to be the double-A state champions. Right now, Bridgeport on top, 7-0 of the polka dots. Speaking of the dots, Mike Anthony over there with Coach Bob Lemley. Mike? Hey, thanks, David. Here's Coach Bob Lemley in his 12th year at Poco with the one-state title. And, uh, boy, you're pretty close to winning this one, although that first drive you'd love to have back, right? We'd like to have it back. You know, we let them get in the end zone there. We played pretty good defense there for a quarter and a half. And uh, offensively, we've moved the ball a few times. We uh, made a mistake or two and haven't gotten the end zone yet. What happened on that fumble? Uh, well, they tell me one of the tackles pulled, and he was supposed to stay in there. And, uh, well, our timing wasn't very good, and we fumbled it. Thanks for the time. Best of luck second half, Coach Bob Lemley of the Polka Dots. Down a touchdown to these Indians, guys. Well, he talked about it, Bear. That offense, he's been able to move the football. And uh, as I said, whenever they get the football, they go good for about the first 30 yards. And then it seems like the wheels fall off the cart. Yeah, they had that first initial drive. They were moving the ball well. And, of course, the big fumble. And uh, we talked on two later possessions. They had uh, key 15-yard penalties. So uh, they certainly need to cut out their mistakes if they're going to come out here on top tonight. Uh, some quick statistics here. Uh, Polka actually leads in first downs unofficially 12 to 7 uh, in terms of uh, passing. Uh, Bridgeport was actually two for two in that first half. And, of course, the one was the big 40-yard pass to Christian Marsh that set up the first touchdown. In terms of rushing the ball, Wanky has 10 carries for 57 yards. Rohrbra has eight for 28. And Lindsay, the quarterback, has five for 23 on the other side of the football quickly. Thomas has 42 yards, Barry 20, and Santmeyer 31. Dots will get the football as we begin the third quarter of action. 7-0. Indians on top of the Dots. We're going to try and even this thing up. Fielded at the six. Fake the reverse. Hit immediately. And it looks like Daryl Thomas fighting for his life over on the far sideline. Not much of a return for the Dots. Well, Daryl Thomas has been a three-year performer at that running back position. And... Uh, each year they say he gets a little more physical and uh, we see it even on that kick return. Uh, he doesn't shy away from contact. The uh, dots were three for 11 passing in that first half and only picked up 21 yards. I'm sure Coach Lemmy would like to see a little uh, better passing fortunes in his second half. We get a look at the replay here, the old fake reverse and uh, we see right there, Daryl Thomas doesn't get down easily. They just ran the first down play, no gain on first down for the dots as they take over on their own 14-yard line. Well, we'll get a quick moment here. I'd like to thank our stat man, uh, Bobby Gaylor, former uh, Wheeling Central quarterback from the early 90s, is uh, capably helping us out here tonight with the statistics. Which he's doing a good job considering he can't add or subtract. Well, I noticed he did take his shoes off just a little while ago to get some great. of those figures. So uh, however he gets the job done, uh, you know, great job, Bobby. I thought maybe you ate something that didn't agree with you, and here he has his shoes off. Second down, Barry gonna try to keep it. He gets stuck big time. Kerr comes in to finish him off, but the first guy on the job who did most of the damage was number 38, Derek Derringer. Well, Derek actually was out last year with Mono. He missed three weeks this year. Actually spent three days in a hospital bed during the season. Uh, missed the first playoff game and part of the second, but uh, this kid has had nothing but bad luck in terms of health, but uh, he presses real hard, and the coaches said he just simply wants to play, and uh, they said he just needs to relax and have a fine state championship game here this evening. Third down and 10 from the 14. Barry going to put it up. Down the middle of the field, it's complete. He's got his big guy, Satello, and that's a first down. Actually, excuse me, that's Andrew Shamlin. That two and four looks identical out there from this vantage point. I tell you, you're having a real tough time there, but uh, Shamlin. Thanks for pointing that out. That's my man, Super <laughs> Slash. Please don't forget this youngster. He's just had a great career for the Polka Dots, and, uh, you know, Dave, we're all too willing to uh, point out your mistakes to you as, <laughs> as you are to me. Uh, I'll get you back, buddy. Don't I'm you worry sure, about that. I'm sure you will. 
Barry did a good job. He checked off his first target, and then he went back to the middle of the field. He had somebody running an out and up on the near side that wasn't there, and he went back to that secondary receiver. Inside handoff, not too bad. Gets about five on first down. Well, Coach Lemley makes the offensive calls, and he said one of the keys this evening was they need to give Barry just a little bit extra time so he can make, as you said, those second and third reads. And, uh, of course, here's just a simple little dive play. And, uh, you know, Polk has done a pretty good job tonight of establishing that inside running game, and it uh, helped him pick up those crucial first downs throughout the evening. <clears throat> second down and four from the 35. Sant Meyer in motion. Barry fakes it, keeps it, and he's not going to go anywhere because he runs into 6'5, 232 pounds of Tim Lindsay. We've talked about the Bridgeport coming in with a 27 game winning streak. Well, the uh, Dots come in with a nice little six game win streak. Uh, they haven't been defeated since that uh, loss down in New Martinsville uh, late in the season, and uh, they've certainly been on a run here late in the season and just a little fake there, but. Uh, Simply nowhere to go, and there's the big guy. We haven't heard much from him tonight, but uh, Tim Lindsay, certainly an imposing figure at 6'5 and 232. Third down and five. Thomas in motion. Barry running for his life now. Gets some room. First down for Barry and some more before he gets hammered on the far sideline. Bobby Oliverio got a good lick on Barry, but not before the junior picks up the first down. Well, you said it so succinctly in the first half. You need to put the football in the hands of your playmakers, and we see here Alan Barry, the junior quarterback, uh, only 5'10", 154, but, uh, you know, does a great job of avoiding the rush here, and uh, then he shows that he does indeed have some wheels and uh, takes a hit. Ryan Cook had a shot at him in the backfield, just couldn't hang on. First down from the 44 now for the Dots. They trail in this game 7-0. Inside handoff to Daryl Thomas gets a couple. That time Ryan Cook gets a little revenge and he makes the tackle. I'll tell you, this Ryan Cook, number 77, a little undersized, is only a 205-pound tackle, but does a great job of reading the offense, as the coach has said. He, he moves to the ball, and uh, they said this youngster is going to give all he's got on every play. 6'1", 205, he's a senior. Dots are going to be facing second down and 10 from their own 44. Barry goes up top, throws behind the receiver. You know, the receivers have been open pretty much all night. Barry has just not been accurate on his throws. They've either been a little hurried, a little high, or behind the receiver. But if, if he gets a little more accurate, that passing game is there. Yeah, and the interesting note on the season, uh, Allen is 70 for 140 and even 50%. So he's been an accurate thrower all season long, thrown for over 1,100 yards, of course, the 12 touchdowns, and uh, certainly a capable passer, but just a little bit off target here tonight, and uh, I'm sure he'd like to hit one or two of those big pass plays. Here we go again. Poker started at their 10. They're now 30 yards upfield, and they face third down and 10. This is usually where they fall apart. This time, they convert. Big third down play to Daryl Thomas. Thanks to that guy right there, Alan Barry. And it's going to be a first down for the Dots in Bridgeport territory. We're going to have to take a look at that. The, uh, obviously, I think it's going to call for amazement here. We see the indication by the referee, uh, David Clutter. He's indeed going to bring the chains out. And uh, we'll I'll bet get... you $10 I'm right. Come on. It always, don't, don't keep, quit looking and just bet me. It always depends upon the spot, Dave, and uh, I would never doubt you. Thank you. But you're about a half an inch short. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get out of credit card. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. You see, you should have taken me up I'll on it. You should have taken me up on it. Even after looking to play off the change up from a half an inch to about a sixteenth of an inch, Dave. <laughs> oh. I, I thought on the preliminary play that indeed they might have picked up the first down, but uh, obviously after the spot of the football, it's uh, just oh so short, and it's going to set you've up. You've got to go for it here. If you're Coach Lemley, you've got to go. Uh, it's going to be a real tough decision, to be honest with you, Dave. Uh, you're you know. the underdog. You're down seven. You've got a good drive going, and you only need an inch. If you can't pick up an inch, you don't deserve to win a state championship. I like your philosophy, but uh, obviously Coach Lemley agrees with you, so... Uh, 
This is going to be one of the big plays in this football game. Quarterback sneak, Allen Berry right behind the center. They got them all stacked up. That's what we got. He goes off guard. Bridgeport saying no, but I have to think, depending on the spot, that he did get it. I mean, he only needed an inch. So yeah. forward progress should have gotten him this first down. Well, I thought the Indians did a great job of stacking that middle. In particular, Ryan Cook was right over the uh, nose of the football. And uh, if they got this first down, which we'll see here after the uh, measurement, let's give a little credit to Allen Berry. I thought he did a good job of seeing that the middle wasn't open. He actually and, slipped. I yeah. mean, if he doesn't slip, I don't think there's even a measurement. Yeah, I think if he uh, wouldn't have slipped on the turf, it would have been an easy pickup. But nonetheless, it's the first down by the length of the football. All right, now you, you're an official. We sitting at home see that it's a first time by the length of a football. Can't you see that by standing out on the field, or are you just doing that to satisfy coaches? In a lot of cases, you're doing it for both the coaches and the fans, Dave, because, you know, you're saying the length of the football, but believe me, we've been faked out on occasion where it wasn't the length, and, and I think what it does, it, it lets both fans and both coaching staffs indeed see the yeah, outcome. Yeah, that you're being thorough. Exactly. Good first point. down and 10, quick pitch outside, Daryl Thomas. Gets a couple before being taken down by Bobby Oliverio. I tell you, this uh, Bridgeport defense doesn't give you a whole lot to the outside. And uh, Oliverio, we haven't called his name a whole lot, but uh, this youngster is extremely physical. He's a 6'8", 180-pounder, and uh, the coach has said he just has a great nose for the football. And we see there, that's a pretty sure-handed tackle. Gain of two, second down and eight from the 44. We have about six and a half minutes to go third quarter. Polka down seven. Inside handoff to Santmeyer, tries to bust it outside. He does, and he picks up six yards on what should have been a loss of about three. The good football players make things happen, and as you indicated, Santmeyer really didn't have an opening. Good contact by the Bridgeport defense, but this little guy bounced it outside, and. Uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to provide a, provide a lot of excitement in the next two years for the uh, Dots. You see right there, he should have been stopped right in the middle of the pack by Ken Kerr. Ken Kerr didn't wrap it and allow yeah. Santmeyer to pick up nearly eight yards. Yeah. Third down and one. Very inside handoff, big hole for Daryl Thomas. Thomas, 10-5, touchdown Polka Dots. We've talked about this youngster. He is the outstanding running back for the Polka Dots, and uh, he's just had a great senior season, and uh, that may be one of the biggest runs of his career for the Polka Dots, and uh, just a great job of seeing the opening, and uh, once he smelt that goal line, he wasn't be to be denied. 37-yard touchdown run. Polka's going to try to tie it up, and it looked like Bridgeport had a run blitz on there, Barry. They had everybody, linebackers up tight, everybody was shooting the gaps, and when you have something like that happens, you break that initial line of scrimmage, there is nobody back deep for that defense. We'll take a look at this all-important extra point, and... Uh... Line drive, and it's good. Folks, we have a ball game. There's some laundry down on the field. Right now, it stands 7-7. Polka and Bridgeport for the double-A state championship. Well, you knew coming into this game that Bridgeport was going to blitz. They saw how effective Magnolia was last week in terms of stopping that running game, Thomas in particular, and uh, this kick wasn't real pretty, and we see right there why the flag was thrown. Uh, number 66, Kenny Kerr, just leveled the kicker, and uh, that wasn't the prettiest kick you're ever going to see for an extra point, but uh, also important, it ties the score at seven. Kerr may be taking out his frustrations on the kicker when he should have been taking him out on a couple ball carriers early when he didn't wrap up. We've talked about, we've talked about Bridgeport. Uh, that was a 13-play, 86-yard drive. Let's pitch it down to Mike Anthony on the field. Well, guys, uh, the poker sideline pretty fired up right now. I'm standing amongst the poker dots, and the fans are just so loud behind me. They can smell a victory here this afternoon, this evening, rather. What a great drive by Polka there, and this is by all means not a pretty game any way you look at it, like an extra point. 7-7 seven, is seven a pretty tight game, and I'm going to say the next touchdown may win this one, and uh, boy, Polka can smell an upset here tonight, guys. Thanks, Mike. 6-21 to go third quarter, 7-7 seven, seven game. Well, as we said, that drive consumed 13 plays. All but two of them were done on the ground, and uh, of course, uh, Allen Berry was the ball carrier on many occasions, but the big carry, final one, 37 yards, and uh, 
That drive consumed five minutes and 39 seconds off the scoreboard clock, uh, taking a little page out of the Indian uh, offensive playbook there, Dave. Once again, that third down and 10 pass from Barry that kept that drive going, the key play in that drive for the Polka Dots. Now it's when the stomach starts tightening up and you start seeing what you're made of in a 7-7 game for a state championship entering the final 18 minutes of this game. Great opportunity for an onside kick here. Kick it away deep. Rohrbaugh at his six. Up to the 15. Rohrbaugh to the 25. Good return up to the 28-yard line. Yeah, that's only going to go on the books as about a 20-yard return, but that was real key. It was a great opportunity for the uh, Polka Dots to pin them down deep in their own territory. And, uh, you know, once again, the uh, Polka defensive team is going to be called upon, but uh, they got to feel a lot more comfortable with that 7-7 tie on the board. Well, now we're going to see what Bridgeport's made of because they didn't play very many close games throughout the year. Ironically, though, they have trailed on four occasions twice in the second half against Tyler and R.C. Bird. So uh, despite the fact they've ran up some huge scores, they have been on the short end of the scoreboard at least twice during the season in the second half, Dave. Wanky on the carry, gets a couple. Coach Lemley. Brings up second down six. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ahead. David. Coach Lemley and his uh, defensive coordinator, Jim Abshire, are both uh, dependent upon the fact that Polk has played some real tough games against tough opponents, and they're hoping that that's going to pay off as the second half wears down. From their own 32, Lindsey hands off inside. Not too much going there for Wanky. Gets brought down immediately. You have Santmeyer in there on the tackle, and he had a couple teammates who rode him down hard, and it's going to bring up third down and about six. Tell you, you really have to be impressed with the play of this youngster. He's all over the field. Only a sophomore. He's all over the field offensively and defensively, and uh, we certainly called Matt's name many times this evening. Gets a little assist there by Daryl Thomas, the uh, star running back. I think it's safe to say we're going to see Polka in these playoffs again next year because they have some studs returning. They have a young team. Yeah, this is an extremely young defense, and uh, I tend to agree with you, David. Third down and two, actually, inside handoff, and it's a first down for the Indians. They're going to move those chains. On a carry that time was Wanky, six foot, 155 pound senior. Yeah, that uh, polka dot defense, you know, you talk about Satello, the big sophomore, Stevie White's only a sophomore, Jess Looper. Uh, right on down the line, Matt Santmar, of course, is an outstanding sophomore. So uh, at times they play as many as six sophomores on that defensive uh, front, and uh, they're going to be heard from for a couple years to come. First down and 10 for the Indians. They're at the 41. Rohrbaugh, big hole. Rohrbaugh hurdling a tackler. And C.R. Warbaugh has a first down at the 46-yard line of Polka. Talk about athleticism. Well, C.R. may line up in what's called the fullback position, but uh, let's face it, he gives them an additional tailback, the way he can run that football. And, uh, you know, this kid is just constant motion and uh, easy to see why he's such an outstanding player and one of the best running backs in the state of West Virginia. And obviously he knows people are going to tackle him low. He's almost 200 pounds. That's where you got to tackle a guy like that. He has the quick feet. He's ready to hurdle anybody who comes in low. They go back to the little guy with a little more speed. That's Wanky, and he's still moving the pile after a gain of six. Tackle that time by Santmeyer again. I'll tell you, this uh, stick eye, as we've referred to it all night long, is just an entering offense. It gives you the ability to run right and run left, and obviously, uh, the Bridgeport's coaches up in the box are trying to study that defense and hit the weak spots and make some adjustments, but uh, Polka has been extremely strong. Other than that first drive, they've done a great job of totally shutting down the uh, Bridgeport offense. Second down and four from the Polka 39. Rohrbaugh met immediately in the backfield by Andrew Shamblin, and he stopped after a gain of two. Going to be third and short. Of course, that's the exact situation that the coach Perry and his staff would like to have. They, they're going to keep the football on the ground, and, you know, when it's third and two, you still, even in that very conservative offense that they have, 
it still allows them a lot of play calls. And, uh, you know, we may see something here where they might get a little fancy and maybe do a pitch or something, Dave. You never know. Third down and one. Great opportunity to do something through the air here. Poka defense jammed up towards that line. Everybody's shooting in. And it's a first down, compliments of Wanky. I don't know how he found a hole to run through there. There were 11 guys within two feet of that line of scrimmage, and Polka had everybody shooting, and they got some penetration. Wanky just did a good job of dancing out of the way of it. We've talked about you know how physical this football game is tonight, but there's some young youngsters that are not real big, and uh, Wanky, another one of those guys that's in the 155-pound range, but uh, this youngster is just tough as nails, and. Uh, Picks up another key first down for the Indians. From the 31, Lindsey going to keep it himself. Good job of keeping his feet, picking up six. Santmeyer misses when he should have had him at the line of scrimmage. Chris Lindsey has a great story. We've already alluded to the fact that he's a uh, lineman from his previous days. Uh, he's been a quarterback since his freshman year at Bridgeport, but uh, this youngster actually had Tommy John uh, I believe rotator cuff surgery last spring, uh, two springs ago actually, David, and he's recovered real well and he's come back to be a great leader and uh, he's seeking his second straight title as a quarterback for the Indians. Second down and four. Warbaugh up the middle, gets a couple before Steve White grabs him around the waist and throws him backwards. You know, you, I've seen a lot of high school football, so have you. I can't remember a more dominating ground game than what Bridgeport has. When you talk about three guys in that backfield who combined for over 3,000 yards rushing, a team in the playoffs averaging nearly 400 yards per contest, teams know what you're going to do, yet you're still racking up almost 400 yards on the ground. That's unbelievable. A big line up front. Well, it's obvious, Dave. They've made a great commitment to a weight room program. They've made a great commitment to this offense and uh, even more remarkable, they've been running it down in Bridgeport land for 31 years. Big stick. Santmeyer and Thomas. We've talked about Darrell. He's obviously an outstanding running back, but... Uh, well, he's taken a couple of hits, so it's probably nice to dish one out finally. Yeah, I think he likes to give them back too, and uh, that time, nice lick by the uh, senior veteran from Polka. And once again, nothing real, real fancy. A lot of just straight on dive blocking. And uh, they're simply going to, you know, get real physical. And uh, Coach Carey said, our kids love to take up the physical challenge each and every Friday night. And uh, this certainly state title game is no exception. Second down eight from the 19. A couple for Wanky. And 12 minutes has come and gone here in the third quarter. We've basically seen two drives. Polka opened up the half with a touchdown drive. Bridgeport gets it back. They're still continuing this drive, and we only have 15 seconds left in the third quarter of uh, a tie football game. You're simply not going to play a quarter of football in a much quicker fashion. And uh, I think we only had two passes by Polk, and they were both complete, if my memory serves me correct, Dave. So, uh, you know, that's about as quick as you can play 12 minutes of football. They just let the clock wind out. So we are 12 minutes away here at Wheeling Island Stadium from determining a double eight state champion. It will either be a repeat championship by Bridgeport or that man right there will lead his polka dots to a championship. 7-7, seven, seven. we're gonna go to a break. We're gonna come back for the fourth quarter.
It's a little chilly on the island, but considering what we've had all week, we'll take it. Third down and six from the 17. Pitch outside by the Indians. Wanky driven out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. Believe it or not, as we begin the fourth quarter of action, that third quarter saw only two drives, basically. We, I mean, we've had two drives the entire third quarter. Polka opened up the second half with a touchdown drive that lasted about six minutes. And now this drive by Bridgeport is approaching seven minutes. Yeah, it's approaching seven minutes, and uh, they've taken the football, uh, if my mathematics I'll try to do here quickly, only about 56 yards and uh, taken almost seven minutes. So uh, they do a great job of eating up the clock, and uh, we're going to see here. Uh, field goal attempt. Field goal attempt. This will be about a 32-yard attempt by Dodd way wide right, but we have officials running all over the field. Delay game. We see the indication here by Sam Jones, the back judge, and that's going to be a delay game and a five-yard mark off. Delay a game, so now, obviously, do you try kicking it again, or do you bring your offense back out there and try for a big play? Uh, Fourth down and 10. I mean, sure, you know, obviously, you're not going to punt it. Now, all of a sudden, it's a 40, almost a 40-yard field goal. I'd bring the, ball, the offense back out, and especially after seeing where that first attempt went. Try to see if you can't pick up a first down or even go in the end zone. Yeah, we got some deep discussion going on here between the referee and crew, and uh, Mr. Snyder's, Joan, and uh, Clutter are putting their collective heads together. See over on the sidelines, Brandon Wanky getting worked on. Maybe he has a cramp or a hip pointer. Indians definitely don't want to see Hick come out. They're, they're waving off the flag. What happened there, Bechtel? I'm not sure I was waiting for uh, <laughs> Dave to give us an explanation there. I was going to, but uh, obviously maybe it just, maybe the clock wasn't reset to 25 seconds, but uh, Coach Lemley obviously not real happy with that. And uh, I'm sure my buddy Willie will confuse him there. <laughs> Willie, one of the characters in the high school football officiating. And uh, Well, either way, it's going to be another 34-yard field goal attempt by Tyler Dodd. Lemley not buying any of it. <laughs> Still quite the gentleman, though. So we're going to do it again, I suppose. And that would have been a great time for the referee to give us an explanation, and uh, hopefully maybe Dave will turn around and uh, inform us and the fans at home exactly what occurred. Nope. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we're going to wind <laughs> the clock, and uh, Bridgeport's going to try to do it again. Here we go. See if Dodd can go one for two. 34 yards away for the lead. It's going to be wide right again. It had the distance. Not the length, but that defense of Polka holds once again. If I have to give a game ball out, it's going to be the Dots defense that gets it. Yeah, well, there's no doubt that the uh, the number one factor in this game tonight has been the, the efficiency and the strength of that Polka Dot defense. Uh, let's get on to Mike Anthony on the field. Can you shed any light on that uh, penalty there, Mike? Maybe we'll go back to Mike later, having some technical difficulties. Mike will come back to Mike later and get an explanation on why that flag was waved off. Coach course, Lemley was upset. Now he could breathe a little easier. Of course, Dave, it's a mood issue because they uh, obviously they missed the kick. And, right. Uh, well, here we go. Dots on offense again. They even faked me out on that one. I did not know where the ball is. Still on his feet is Santmeyer. Huge gain down the sidelines. They might be waving at about the 17, saying that he stepped out of bounds, or the 27, excuse me. You'll have to wait and see. I believe that's what they're saying, that he did go out of bounds. Okay, nonetheless, great effort. It was a little, looked like a little inside reverse action, Dave, and uh, great job of execution by the Polk offense. We see there, Santmar takes the uh, thing. Uh, Der Derringer uh, couldn't quite come to tackle, and I think the indication there is that he did indeed step out. Uh, appears to be about the 26 or 27. Second down and four, penalty flags thrown. 
Wanky trying to get to the outside, or excuse me, Thomas trying to get to the outside. <laughs> You're suffering from that Bechtel oh. disease. It's called reverse numbers. <laughs> I get it right sometime tonight. Of course, obviously, we haven't seen neither of these teams in action during the season, and uh, sometimes we do get a little confused on the uh, number call. <laughs> See if we get an explanation this time. We've had two touchdowns in this game. Bridgeport scored on their initial drive in the first half. They have not sniffed the end zone since and Polka had not sniffed the end zone until their initial drive of the second half. This is a battle of attrition. <laughs> we'll listen in. As you can hear, coach wasn't real happy. Let's go down to Mike Anthony, Michael. Well, guys, the fans are not too happy with some of the calls here, but the call we were talking about earlier was Willie Merriman told me they reset the football. They spun it around and didn't reset the 25-second clock, which is why uh, that last penalty did not occur. Nice. Thank you for that, Michael. Two flags have now been waved off here in the fourth quarter. One First down and 10 for the 31. One each way, I might add. <laughs> yes. Barry on the keeper. Runs it right back up the gut, and Adam Barry is real close to a first down at the 44-yard line. The thing I like about Barry is once he makes up his mind, he turns the shoulders, he squares up, puts the head down, and he goes. There's no dancing around. He just goes. We see it right here. Allen is very quick, very elusive, and uh, Lindsey misses the tackle there, and uh, Barry does a great job of running north and south before he's tackled by C.R. Rawbro. Here's a first down from the 43. Lemley keeps it on the ground, gain of three. I'll tell you, throughout the evening, Polka's done a great job. We talked about a quickly moving game, but uh, Polka probably leads in time of possession, and they've done a great job. Of course, their last drive consumed 86 yards, and I'm sure if you're Coach Lemley and staff, you'd like to take the ball down the field 80 yards and uh, consume another five or six minutes. So. Uh, once again, second down and seven, not a bad play calling situation. Barry keeps, taken down from behind almost immediately. Darren Floyd, six foot, 230 pound senior, makes a stop for the Indians on number 22. We definitely have to give the Credit also to this Bridgeport defense. You know, this Polka offense came in averaging about 35 points a game in the playoffs. Now against Magnolia, of course, they scored 21 off of interception return. So they were pretty much shut down last week also, but still the Indians defense has been all over the place. Here you go with your trick play, wide open at the 32. Thomas is trying to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Polka Dots. Well, David, you knew somewhere, somehow, Polka was going to run a trick play. This wasn't another fake punt variety, but this was a nice play. The double pass, and uh, Coach Bob Lemley and his staff certainly have many, many plays in that bag of tricks. We get a look at it here, the backward lateral. And, Barry uh, throws it out to Brent Roberts. Only a sophomore, backup quarterback. Of course, uh, yeah, I should have talked about that earlier. I had that in my notes. You know, Roberts is the backup quarterback. You know, we should have been looking for him. Number eight had a fresh jersey in the game, and uh, anytime you can get this fell out in the open with his quickness, he can certainly get it to the end zone. And if uh, you're poking with that extra point there, you have to be extremely excited. Extra point is good, and the polka dots are eight minutes and 53 seconds away from the AA state championship. They lead 14 to seven over Bridgeport, last year's winner, and now we're gonna see what the Indians have as they try to answer the call here. They have been shut down well, we since see, their initial drive of the game. We get a good look at the real youngster there, Roberts. <laughs> and, uh, he Think he's just, hyperventilating oh, over there? Oh, that's the biggest <laughs> play of his young career, and uh, I'm sure he'll be throwing some passes from that quarterback position, but uh, maybe none more important in his career. Uh, that drive, took only six plays. It consumed two minutes and one seconds, and it was an 80-yard <laughs> drive, and uh, easy to see. That youngster is extremely excited, and uh, of course, with the big 53-yard hookup, 
to the uh, running back Thomas and uh, <laughs> can there be a more excited youngster in the state of West Virginia than Brent Roberts right now. <laughs> He's trying to remain calm, but inside you, you can see the little bursts of energy. He is ecstatic as he should be. What a play called by Lemley and company and the execution was perfect. And what I love, you take a look at that youngster, he could line up for any junior high team in the state and uh, no way would suspect the thing. You can never tell by the look on uh, Coach Lumley there. I'm sure he's still concerned. He wants to get a couple more big efforts out of that uh, poker defense. Well, we'll see what Bruce Carey's troops are going to do. They definitely have the firepower to answer, but they have not been able to dent that poker defense for three quarters. High kick taken at the 10 by Wanky. Wanky return, good return up to the 31-yard line. Tackle that time by Jeff Carr, 180-pound junior. Of course, Jeff, one of the uh, special team players, and uh, I'll tell you, Brent Roberts, if they win this game, I don't think that young fellow's <laughs> going to sleep tonight. Uh, you know, he is just extremely excited, and uh, as you said, he's trying to calm down, but uh, he is certainly wide-eyed, <laughs> and uh, take a look at that youngster. He is having fun. Here we go, first down and 10 from the 30. Lindsey sprints it out, tosses it outside to Warbaugh, and he doesn't get too much because Andrew Shamlin's there to make the stop. I'll tell you, if Brent Roberts lives to be 110, he'll be telling his great, great grandchildren <laughs> about that play. And, uh, you know, right now, uh, Coach Abshire and the defense would like to have some great stops and uh, turn that football back over to the potent poke offense. He can hardly contain himself. What's great They're about it? They have to stuff him in one of those garbage <laughs> cans back there and haul him out. And you can see the sidelines over there and the Poca fans hysterical right now. Second down and seven from the 33. Lindsey puts it up, incomplete at the 31. Boy, if they go three and out here, you talk about a momentum swing. Absolutely, and the, and the key there is Poca's been getting it done on the ground. They've been able to eat up some valuable clock time in their uh, previous drives. So, uh, you know, right now this has become a real short second half, and uh, that's due to both teams. So if you're Coach Perry, uh, you certainly don't want to turn this football over on downs with the uh, clock ticking under the eight-minute mark. Big play here for the Bridgeport Indians. Third down and seven from their own 33. We're under eight minutes to play. Lindsey going to put it up. Throws outside, it's picked off. And the Polka Dots will take over at the Bridgeport 32. What a play defensively by Josh Crago. Well, ironically, Josh did not start tonight. They wanted to put another defensive lineman in there, but uh, this youngster, he's a little bit on the slender side. 6'1", 146 senior, but... Uh, He's only had a little bit of playing time tonight, but he certainly takes advantage of it. And, uh, you know, they wanted to get that one more lineman there, but Josh had that big interception and touchdown return last week against Magnolia, but uh, he probably won't have a bigger interception in his career than that one right there. Barry fakes the handoff inside, goes to Santmeyer outside, doesn't get much. If Boca can score, on this drive, Bridgeport is in a world of hurt because this is not a quick strike offense, and it's an offense that has been shut down totally for three quarters now, three and a half quarters, actually. I, I would suggest that Poker right now, their number one concern, yeah, they'd love to score. Run that clock. But is, is consuming the clock, and, you know, they've got Bridgeport a little bit out of their element already with that seven-point lead. They put him into a passing game, and uh, we all realize Bridgeport doesn't like to throw the football. Second down and 10 from the Bridgeport 32. 7.08, 7.07, 7 7.06 to go. Inside handoff. We can have another touchdown. You've got to be kidding me. Daryl Thomas, second touchdown of the quarter. And Polka has opened this thing up, and Bridgeport is in dire straits. Allen Berry did a great job. He was aware of the uh, play clock. It was ticking down to one second. He did a great job of getting that snap off. 
great quick opener, and any time you hand, put the football in that young man's hands, uh, you know, and open a hole, he's going to find the end zone. And uh, we see it right here, just a simple dive play. And uh, Dave, Boy, you, Left guard and left tackle on that offensive line. Put a hole in there that you could have ran through, Bechtel. Extra point is good. 21 to 7. Polka upsetting the Bridgeport Indians, the defending state champs. Mike Anthony, what's it like down on that field? Michael Anthony. Well, we'll try to go back to Mike later. I think he's caught up in the hysteria. And I think the microphone blew up on him. Who knows? 6.58 to go in this game, and the polka dots are happening right now. Well, certainly a change of fortune. That was a quick strike, two-play, 54-second drive. It covered 32 yards, and, of course, just a great run there by that young man, and uh, we'll get a look at here. Nothing fancy, but when you have a hole that you can drive a Mack truck through and uh, you have that youngster speed, uh, you know, there's just no doubt about it. Uh, it's going to result in a touchdown. We've talked about this fella all night long. Daryl Thomas is just one fine, outstanding running back. Uh, nearly 1,800 yards on the season, but none more important than the 32 consumed in that quick strike and drive. you got to give credit to Jesse Looper, Eric Gibson, Ryan Burdett, three of those guys up front who are opening those holes. Mike Anthony, take it away, baby. Thank you, David. Yes, I still have the microphone in my hand. And Polk is taking it right to Bridgeport and meeting with their own game, their running game. And Daryl Thomas has been a big spark, big smile on his face over here. And yes, the Indians are out of their element having to throw the football. You know, they don't like to do that. Back to you guys. On the return this time by the Indians, Brandon Weinke takes it up to nearly the 40-yard line. I believe he stopped at the 35. Well, 6.52 to go, Bridgeport down by two scores. It's not looking good for the Indians. Well, ironically, Dave, the great football forecasters that you and I are, uh, we said the interceptions wouldn't play a factor here tonight, but uh, obviously. Actually, you said that. Okay, you're giving <laughs> credit for that. But uh, nonetheless, you know, once you get Bridgeport out of their element, and, uh, you know, Craig o just came up with that outstanding interception that uh, certainly has set the tone for this football game. Chris Lindsay, inside handoff. Gain of five to Rohrbaugh. Block ticking. Definitely an enemy of the Indians right now. It's at about six minutes and 30 seconds. Bob Lemley has to feel real good about where his team is sitting right now. Well, honestly, you know, they were a little bit of a surprise to even be here. You know, after that one and two start, uh, I'm sure there were some questions in Dotland, but... Uh, well, I think that was a matter of getting some guys healthy, too. Yeah, and then getting uh, Mr. Thomas back in the lineup, obviously. Wanky on the carry. He's close to a first down. He stopped a yard short. Are you surprised by the fact that Warball has not 